Hey guys, Forest Geckos here again. Um, I'm going to do a care video on the gargoyles. Um, as you guys know about uh, from my last video, um, our business is going to be an online business. Um, me and my friend are doing breeding. Uh, he's taking care of all the online stuff. I'm taking care of most of the care for most of them. Um, yeah, so let's start off with humidity and uh, humidity and temperatures. So their temperatures are about 70 to 80 uh, degrees is their most comfortable. Um, they can fall down to 65. I, you don't really want to get them too much colder. Um, I know that gargoyle geckos like it a little bit more warmer. Like They like it about 80 degrees um, than crested geckos. They like it about 75. Uh, I like to keep mine, the cool side 74, and my hot side about 77. If you look at my tanks, they're 77 and 74, 76, point 0.8, and 75. So uh, I use these little uh, gecko ledges too. This one, These ones are mag naturals, these two are. And these ones are the Pangaea reptile. Um, I strongly recommend Pangaea for any of your your gecko needs. Um, they're my favorite place to go through online. Um, these geckos, their brand of ledges are a little bit better, I think. Um, I mean, these ledges, the mag naturals, their magnets are, are a lot sturdier, but um, I mean, you know, like, they turn brown over time from the UV lights. And gargoyle geckos don't necessarily need UV, but I like to keep them on UV just in case. Um, I mean, you know, it can't hurt them, that's for sure. But uh, these ones are like a hard plastic resin kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're magnets. I can put the weight of my whole hand on there, you know. And, and those, those geckos don't get that big. So, uh, so inside of there, I feed them rapashi uh, day gecko diet. And day gecko diet, you know, some people think, oh, it has more sugar and it's sweeter. Uh, truth behind it is the gay ge day gecko diet really isn't sweeter. It's it doesn't have more sugar in it. Anything else? It's just cherry and fig flavor. And I find that mine really love the cherry and fig flavors. Um, cleaning as far as cleaning goes, I use the F10 SC veterinary disinfectant. It's one part um, disinfectant to two hundred parts water, I believe. Um, you know, so it's just one milliliter for a whole spray bottle, you know, and it's supposed to be safe for reptiles at that, at that, um, level of concentration, but honestly, I still will not spray it with them in there. Um, most of my tanks don't have to be cleaned because they're going to have, uh, they have, um, like the, uh, isopods in it. And that eats the, the poo and any waste, you know, anytime anything molds. Um, these tanks don't have it. Um, these are my newer two. Um, they have, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll do the, the false bottom, which is with the hydro balls. Um, you do a layer of screen, and then you do the eco earth or plantation soil on top of it. And this one only has the bark on top of it, the cypress mulch. But usually when I have the isopod ones, I'll put a leaf litter on top of it with, um, you know, and these are real plants. So this one is eventually going to be a living tank. But this this guy's going to be in tank a tank like this again. Um, it's an 18 by 18 by 24. Uh, Exoterra, if you can't tell, I love Exoterra. All the plants are Exoterra. The hoods, Exoterra. The gauges are Exoterra. Everything, I just love the way that Exoterra sets up everything. Um, their humidity should be about 50 to 80%, and how I let mine work is, um, because I like to let the soil dry a little bit, I, I have an automatic mister, it's an Aquazamp, um, and that kicks on in the morning for a minute, and then it kicks on at night for a minute and a half. And right after it kicks on, it gets them about 80-85% humidity, and then it gets dry before the next, it gets about 19% before the next misting, like right before the next misting, and right now it's about 19%, so the mis the next misting is going to be just in a few minutes. Um, but, yeah, so uh, the Aquazamps are great. I love Aquazamp, um, but honestly, I'm going to be going to the Reptile Convention on September 28th and 29th in Sacramento to get a Mist King. Um, the Aquazamp is good. It works 
for like you know for, it'll it'll be good for a regular you know breeder or whatever um it only runs up to 10 nozzles and the thing with the mist king is is i'm going to go to the upgraded version where it can run about 20 20 nozzles um i might even go to the industrial which can run you know tons and tons more nozzles than that um I'm not sure yet. Um, the thing is, is you know, like I said, we're doing a breeding business, and we're gonna also be doing like cage cells and everything online. Um, and doing that, I have so many tanks that need to be, you know, misted. So I'm gonna need a bigger misting system. Um, me and my best friend, we're gonna be doing uh, gargoyle geckos. Um, we, I, we did, we did, uh, you know, the the Cresteds for a little while, and, you know, they're just not as interesting to me as some of the other gecko species. They just seem really generic, and, you know, everybody likes them. Um, the gargoyles definitely have my have my favor, and uh, we're actually going to start breeding crocodile geckos, um, day geckos, uh, you know, just just any kind of forest gecko, um, you know, that, and that's what, what why we spotted our name, forest geckos. Um, we're actually about to go get a day gecko, and I'll do a setup video on that. We're about to do two get day geckos, actually. Um, and I'll do a setup video on that when I get that. And, uh, you know, me and my friend will show you how to set those up. And we'll, we're going to do unboxings for them, and just all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but, yeah, so, um, like I said, we feed them the day gecko diet most of the time. And I, I messaged Alan Raposhi and asked him about it, and he said it's the same mix as Crested Gecko. It's just cherry flavored which is why they like what the day geckos like better and i find that my gargoyles love the cherry better than the other and some people are like oh it'll make your geckos fat it's more fattening but uh it's more sugar and but i like i said i talked to alan rapashi um online and he told me that it's the exact same mix it doesn't have anything different in it except for the flavoring and uh so you know my geckos i, I mix it up sometimes i use crested gecko uh, peach flavor mango flavor and then the regular flavor which is banana strawberry and then I use, uh, you know, the the day gecko, and they love the day gecko. Day gecko is their main. I don't feed any live whatsoever. Um, you can feed live, but I just choose not to. And like I said, you don't need UVB, but because I'm having live tanks, you definitely need it. And uh, this is my other guy. He's just hiding back there. You can see him right there. Uh, his name's Pikachu because of the red dots right behind his eyes, like right on his cheeks. Um, yeah, and then this guy's named Totodile. We decided to keep them all Pokemon names for the most part because uh, me and my friend grew up on it, and we just love it. So most of our, our gargoyles are Pokemon names, and uh, even maybe our day geckos. We haven't decided yet. We have to see how they act first and get names for them. But, uh, yeah, if you want any tutorials on anything, you know, um, we're, next time I clean the cage, I'll do a tutorial on a live setup. Um, when we set this one up, actually, and when we set the the day geckos up, because we have a bunch of stuff coming from Black Black Forest or or ju BlackJungle dot com, I mean, and uh, all sorts of live plants, and we're gonna do a mostly live, and we have the isopods coming in. We just have so much coming in this this next month, and uh, you know, and then like I said, I have a humidifier down there that I turned into a fogger. If you want to know how to make those, I'll teach you. Um, I'll show you guys. And now let's talk about the gravid females. Or just the females in general. I like to keep these inside of all female enclosures because they want somewhere dark to hide their eggs and just so they don't become egg bound. And these are really nice. They just, you know, they have the holes in them, the hole in it. And then down here you just put Eco Earth or Moss. I use Eco Earth because they like the Eco Earth a lot better. And then you just put the lid on and they go right in there, crawl in there, lay their eggs and come out. And I put that on all my female cages, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we do with them. Um, you know, I just, I, I'd rather them not be egg-bound. Uh, so, yeah. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, let me know. You guys don't have to feed them live, anything like us, you know. We choose not to feed them live because it's, it's, you know, it's better. Like, I think it's better. It's a lot easier, um... You don't have any escaping crickets or anything else. And honestly, I found out that mine really don't like live. Like, they don't go after it. Like, I've I've wasted just crickets before. You know, they just, I found them all dead at the bottom of their tanks because they just don't eat them. They like the day gecko, and I, you know, and that's perfectly good for them. That When you feed them day gecko, you don't have to do any more supp supplementation to them at all. So, 
we just have a couple healthy, really healthy guys. And, you know, when I go into Petco, I find out that they have, like, uh, they're feeding crickets. And, you know, oftentimes I'll look at them and I'll, I'll see their jaws are a little misformed. And that's that's the first sign of metabolic bone disease. Uh, you know, their jaws are offset. And uh, none of mine have that problem. I mean, you know, and that's because they don't supplement them right. Um, some places are better than others, you know, and I mean, I actually got this one from Petco, and I was done getting gargoyle geckos, and then I walked by, and I saw him, and he just had those red cheeks, and you know, being a breeder, that's what we look for, so, um, yeah, so, but, yeah, um, with that, that veterinary spray, the disinfectant I was telling you, I spray down all the things that aren't plants, like, I take them out of the cage, and spray them all down, you know, about once, once or twice a month, um, you know, these, however, the ledges that they eat off of, I clean almost every day. But, uh, yeah, so like I said, if you guys have any questions or uh, need help with anything, uh, let us know. Um, rate, comment, subscribe. Um, you know, we'll have lots more coming up. And then, also, these are the, the spider plants um, in here. They're live, but, yeah, so like I said, if you have any questions, just uh, write us, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. All right, thank you. Have a good day, YouTube. Thanks for watching.